verses 36 through 39. He told them this parable. No one tears a patch from a new garment and sews it on an old one. If he does, he will have torn the new garment, and the patch from the new will not match the old. And no one pours out wineskins. It pours new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the new wine will burst the skins. The wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No new wine must be poured into new wineskins. I read that wrong. No. New wine must be poured into new wineskins, and no one after drinking old wine wants the new, for he says, the old is better. Here ends the reading of his holy word. So a very happy new year to you all. And this is the time of year where we begin to see the possibilities of change in our lives. Now, I, like so many of you, make a resolution each year. And each year it tends to change. And if I'm honest, most years I fail at keeping those resolutions. I know when we think about this time of year, we tend to focus on what we would like to change about ourselves. People will be making resolutions to lay down bad habits and pick up good ones like working out or trying to lose weight. And I can remember as I was growing up, this is the time of year when you see all the commercials for the next miracle weight loss fad. We would see things like Weight Watchers or Jenny Craig or my all-time favorite uh, was Slim Fast. You know, you drink this shake twice a day and you eat a salad for dinner and then you can look like a celebrity. Well, obviously, if you don't put any calories into your body, you lose weight. And I can always remember they had a celebrity endorser and they would hold up a big pair of pants that supposedly they used to wear. And it looks like you could have fit two of them in there. See, that is what we have come to associate this time of year with, a new year and a new me. We feel as if just because the calendar page is turned, that something is going to change in our lives. Now, don't get me wrong. I believe we should make efforts to better ourselves. And if this New Year's Day is the date that you have decided to make a change for the better in your life, I pray that you are successful. I think the problem with resolutions, though, is that when you really think about them, they're all about us, or they're all about just me. I need to work out. I need to lose weight. I need, I need, I need. So when resolutions are all about us, when we fail to live up to them, we're really only letting ourselves down. And if that is the case, it becomes easier for us to walk away from that resolution. Now in our scripture for today, we find Jesus telling us that we will need to change and become new again. That we will need to open up our hearts in a new way in order for us to be able to understand what he is going to teach us. You see, we are the old wineskins, and he is the new wine. And he needs us to become new again so that we, he can pour his teachings into us and so that we do not burst. And then that way we can age and become the old wine as well. Then what are we to do? Should we make New Year's resolutions to open our hearts to the Lord? Well, yes. And no. You see, you could say yes because you're on the right track there. We should be opening our hearts and minds to what Jesus wants from us this year. Not just this year, but in all years. But it's not a resolution that we need to make. You see, God doesn't deal in resolutions. God deals in covenant. Our God is a God of covenant. 
We say that often, but what does it really mean? Well, it means that God does not want us to just say, you know, I'm going to open up my heart to you this year. See, that would be a resolution. A covenant is an agreement, meaning that there are two parties involved. Now, I said that resolutions, they're all about us, right? Well, a covenant is all about us and God together. Now, one of those things is much more powerful than the other, right? A covenant would sound more like this. God, I need you in my life. I need you to help me open my heart and mind to you this year. I need your guidance. Lead me where you will, Father. In this agreement, we are agreeing that we need God and acknowledging that God will be there with us. Now, covenants are nothing new to God. He made covenant with Abram that if he followed him, he would make his descendants number more than the stars in the sky. He made covenant with Moses that if he followed him, he would lead his people out of slavery and into the promised land. He made covenant to be the God of the people of Israel. And when they turned away, he remained steadfast. And he made covenant with us that if we accept his son as our Lord and Savior, then we will have everlasting life with him. So you see, if you've accepted Christ as your Savior, you have already entered into covenant with God. We make other covenants with God as well. In a few weeks, our confirmation class will have completed their work. No, I did not forget about you guys, I promise. They will be standing up here before you all and entering into their own covenant with God. And you as the body of the church will also enter into a covenant as you agree to help guide those young people in their walk with Christ. So the question for us today is this. Do we really need a new year and a new me? Well, it is my utmost hope that you have taken the covenant that you made with God seriously in your own life. That you have held up your side of the agreement to do your best to walk in the way that Jesus taught us to. Now, if you haven't, well, maybe this is a good year for a new you. Maybe you need to renew that covenant with God. Or maybe you need to enter into it for the first time. And if you need to renew that covenant with God, take heart. Because though God was in covenant with the people of Israel, and they turned away from him time and time again, when they came back to him, he was right there waiting every time. And if you need to enter into that covenant for the first time, I'd like to talk to you more about it. Now, if we are honest with ourselves, what we will find is that even the best of us can improve upon how we are holding up the end of that, our end of that agreement that we have made with God. Much like our resolutions, we fail at times to hold up that agreement with God. Perhaps we can find new ways to serve him by getting involved in the church in a new way. Or involved in our community in a new way. Perhaps we can increase the frequency in which we study his word. Or we can increase the times and the way that we pray. You see, just like our physical selves, there is always room for improvement in our spiritual lives. And as I thought about it this year, what I would like to improve when it pertains to my covenant with God, I came to this conclusion. I would like to be more bold in my proclamation of Jesus as my Savior. I want to be more fearless in sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. Now you might be thinking, well, don't you do that every week here, Pastor? I certainly hope that I do. But as I think about it, and what can I do to improve how I'm holding up my end of the covenant with God, that is where I feel that I am being called most strongly. For each and every one of you, 
you will need to determine where those improvements need to be made. So this year, let's commit ourselves to being the best that we can be when it comes to holding up our end of the covenant that we have made with God. Because I know he's going to hold up his end. My challenge for you this year, not just this week, this entire year, what is one way you can improve your spiritual life? Make covenant with God and do it this year. Amen.